So I've been asked to look on this brand new radio here, so Cobra 29 LX. I haven't powered up yet for the first time. I always power radio up before I do anything with it, just to make sure there's nothing wrong with it before I even start touching it. It looks to be brand new. It's still got the little peel on the screen here. It's pretty nice. And this little power cable, which is really short. And uh, mic. So what I normally do on these radios, I've got this little modification board to put in, which I designed. Really simple board. And with this board, I can put new end channels into these radios. The only problem is with this particular type, they won't display the frequency because the display is driven by a controller. And because I'm not changing the microcontroller side of it, that just still displays incorrectly. But that's just the way it is. The radio will be on these end channels, I just won't display it. Because it has a frequency display on this particular type. So let's power this up for the first time. We'll check it out, make sure it works okay. And then if that's all good, then I'll proceed with the modification. I've got to set 2.5 amps, 13.8 volts. Turn it on. Interesting, it's drawing 50 milliamps, even though the power's off. I guess that's because it's not truly off. Turn it on. There you go, it's booted up. And that sort of frequency display thing, is, like I was saying before, that frequency display I can't change. Well, there may be a way of doing it, but I haven't gone there. And I'm not that interested in going there, to be honest. But you have a channel display here, which is the main thing. Hook this up to a load, and I'll check the power. Make sure the power is OK. Check the receiver is OK. Well, I've gone through and tested the radio. Basic test, it does transmit, it does receive. Channel 1 is receiving. I'm input injecting a minus 3 dBm signal at that frequency. And it's just flicking S9 like it should be. It should be maybe a fraction higher, but it's basically there. So it seems to work. So I'm going to get on with the modification and get this thing done. So it turns out this radio is also a new version of the radio. I haven't seen this PCB version before. At a first glance it looks like it's probably the same kind of design, just modernised. So I can see a 10.24 MHz crystal here, which is a good sign. And we've got some inductors around the place like I'd expect there to be. And TX Max or something like that. So it looks like it's basically the same. This is a received side RX filter here, IF. And we've got a 14 volt relay just here, which is interesting. Yeah, so I haven't seen this exact version before. This is definitely different. I haven't done radios for a little while, so it's been a few years since I've done radios. So obviously these modern versions have come out in that time. The PRL is marked as a 29 Limited, and it's also got a microcontroller down here. Yeah, obviously microcontroller is control and display, which means I could potentially find a way of interfacing with this thing and modifying the display to display the correct frequency, but I'm not going to go there in this case. I've done multiple of these before, the frequency display is wrong, it's just the way it is. Maybe I will actually have a poke around to see if I'm seeing any data there, which maybe I could do something with. It'd just be nice to solve that, but anyway, this is a different design. I believe it's basically the same structure, so I think one of these cans is going to be, probably this one here, is likely to be the 15.36 MHz tuner. A triple output from the POL, so the POL gets 10.24, divides it by 2 to get 5.12, which comes out of the POL, and then that goes through a tuning circuit, which then creates it to 15.36. So it's that frequency there which you need to change, and basically disconnect that and um, replace it with what's coming out of this. Anyway, I'll look at this, and I'll let you know what I find. Hopefully I can still do this modification. So there we go, there's a close look at the circuitry there. So there's the POL, 29 Limited, 1915R, I think it says. And there's a microcontroller down here. So I'm guessing it's driving it all display and everything like that and probably the rest of the radio. And this will be controlling the POL. I expect it will be anyway. So this channel switch is a rotor encoder. A lot of these connectors are actually labelled which is nice. I've gained there. That socket there has got labels, see? 5 volt ground. Backlight. It's nice that it's labelled. It's nice to do that at least. Anyway, I'll have to figure this out. There's the back of the board. Not much there, is there? So I need to probe this with the scope and see what we get. I'm going to find out what the 15.36 megahertz is. I've got a suspicion of where it is. I think it's just here, but I'm not sure yet. So let's power this up. I've got something there. Yep, 15.3591. So, yep, right there I've got something, but it's a tiny part. I need to see if I can even hook up to this stuff because it could be tricky. So it's going through C87 and then it kind of disappears. I can't see where it goes. So I think C95 is the input which is just here. Yep 5.12 that's right. And you've got a capacitor over here which appears to be the output. 
So there's ground there, disconnected, disconnected, ground there. There's a little capacitor just down there. Tiny cap, like an 0201 or something. C87. I've got 15.36 coming out of there. Not quite sure what it goes to, but that's where it is. So here's the board number, KPC2031-3. And it's all labelled across the back here as well, where it joins onto the front panel, which is nice. Do like the fact they've labelled everything. That's brilliant. It's got 13.8 volts down here, 3.3 volts. Is that can? Interesting. P24 to P25, backlight stuff, grounds, panel key, backlights again. Bluetooth stuff. Volume, reset, chip select, RS. SDA SCL and there's another VOI BT I don't know what it is anyway so there's there's some data lines just there and I've just probed those in my scope and well there's data present on there so it could be an SPI bus the chip select is going up and down in value so it is selecting chips that appears to be an SPI bus I've had a bit of a look around here and the circuit diagram appears to match this radio as well for the older version so this sort of essentially kept a lot of it the same. Some of the part numbering is the same. So this capacitor here, C87, to remove. That is the original numbering as well, and that used to be in the position. And there's a footprint over here for a C163, which isn't populated. So what I'm actually going to do, I've put a post in here. On, there's actually a convenient screw right there. So I've attached a post with a thread lock on it. And I'm going to put my board in here, in that position. I'm going to attach it right there. I've got a ground point here which I'm actually going to run straight across to this metal can here. All right, so I'm going to solder a little wire lead to this metal can. So that's got a decent ground to this point. And then I've got to hook up a VCC, which is a bit harder because it's supposed to be 5 volts. So trying to find it, it's a bit tricky. Now, I have found a VCC supply, or what appears to be a supply, and that is just over here on this U701. Uh, it is U701. So that with that C704 and C705 are that's a 5 volt measurement right there and it does come around the chassis come across here, goes through a via there pops back up again where that tantalum capacitor is just down there at C706, pops it back up over there and comes up here and you've got a 5 volt rail right there on the second pin up of that connector, that yellow wire so there is a 5 volt supply right here there is something I can use exactly the best place to hook up to that yet I'm not quite sure We've also got this U600 sitting over here, which I might have a look at and see if I can find 5 volts on there, because that would be a convenient spot for it. So if I can find 5 volts in this area, then I can just run a little short little wire. But as I'm not completely sure about all this other stuff that's around here yet, I mean, we've got this header sitting over there, J302. Maybe there's 5 volts over there. I'll have a look at that. If I can find 5 volts in that header, that'd be good. I'll run a wire from there instead. So I'm going to check that yet. Pair it up. Wait for it to beat properly. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Off scale, it's probably 8 volts in. No, off scale, no. So there's no 5 volt rail on that header, which is a shame, because that would have been really convenient. Um, never mind, I'll find something. I mean, there is actually a hole in the ball just here. So, and there's that one there, that pin, that second pin up, which I'll show you. Right, so that pin there is 5 volts. Could actually run a wire through the hole in the board bring it up and hook it onto that pin. That might be the best way of doing it. I mean, seeing as there's no 5 volts on that header there, I could just probe this chip and see if there's one there. Maybe there's something there I can use. Let's have a quick look. Pin 1, nope. Pin 14 or 16, that's 3.3 .3 volts. So yeah, that's out of the question as well then. That's a 3.3 .3 volt device, so not there. All right, so I think I'm going to have to run a wire. This doesn't use much power. It's insignificant, so the regular should be a handle it. Right, let's just tin this wire. This wire is really thin for what I need. It's actually way smaller than the holes in the circuit board that I put into, but uh, it'll fit through the other hole really easy and stuff. Let's shove this into the VCC pin. With this. Trim this off and hold it. Don't lose the trim piece. The output and the other one I'm going to do from the top of the ball, so I'm going to attach the board now. Do some thread lock on this as well. Put a little bit in there, just to tone a little bit. Less than a pot on the post. You know, if someone wants to take this out, I want to have it removable. 
you know, you want to be able to get it back out again at some point. So let's put a screw in there. Okay, so we'll set it in there. Try and get it nice and straight so it looks okay. There we go. That's in place. So I'll have to do some routing with this wire here, get it tidy. But basically, pull it through, have a little bit of slack in it, like that. And you're going to put it onto that position there. So let's cut it off here. Yes, I should use a proper wire stripper for this, but I don't need to really. It's just one one wire. Continue this wire as well. Just freshen up a little bit with some leaded, because leaded is what I used. Now the hole this is going through is actually got a earth on it. See it's this plated through hole. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to, once I've done this, I will put some sealant in there as well to insulate it so it doesn't wobble around and potentially get cut through by rubbing with vibration on the edge of that hole. So I've just scratched up the corner of that uh, tuning can there so I can get the solder to stick to it. Let's just get some solder on there first. Get that to actually adhere. Can take a little bit sometimes. But that's looking like it's fine there. Now I've got a component leg, which has been used for something before, so we'll just uh, form it to where we want to go. And like I said, it's nice and convenient to go straight to there. Just like that. So let's just solder this. Yeah, and of course it's spun around. <laughs> right. okay. I'm going to trim this down a bit. Solder that to the can. Don't want to get the can too hot, I was could melt the slug housing and stuff like that so that should do it. I'll clean these up afterwards once I'm finished. So now the next thing we've got to do is hook up the output from this oscillator to the input of the mixer which is here. So that C163 like I said is the position where the passive which is missing. Now I'm not quite sure if I'm going to run a wire over to here or if I run a wire to there. If I run a wire to there I've actually got to put a capacitor in series so I might actually just use a through hole capacitor and run it from there to there. Now that's a really small position though. I'm not sure if I can get a through hole component on there. So I've actually got some of this really thin wire. I might have to do this on instead. But anyway, the capacitor's here has got to be lifted. C87 just there. Which you going? Where's that? Well, right there. That tiny little cap just there. That's got to be moved. So I'm going to... I think I'll displace it. I'll take it off, stick it onto one pad. I'll move one pad over. Leave it intact on the board because maybe it gets used later on for something. And then I will attach up here to that other unused pad for 163 just there for the output of this oscillator. I wish it was a bigger pad to put it onto but that's what we've got. I mean there is actually the wire there too. Is there a wire? Yeah. So I'll show you that. So 163 also comes down over here and goes to a wire which is in shadow just there. See the wire right there? It also goes to that. So I've got a couple of points that I could actually attach to. They're both a bit tricky. This one's got easier access. I think I'll go for that one. So there you go, there's that capacitor, I've moved that. You see it was on those two pads there before. So I've just taken it off, shifted it up slightly so it's only attached at one end. So the capacitor's now out of circuit so it means this coil is no longer being used. And uh, I've cleaned up the solder on these two a little bit. Cleaned up the flux. So now I'm ready to attach the through hole capacitor to the position up here. Right, I'm going to solder the, the through hole capacitor into here. Now it's a bit tricky to get in place so I'm just going to solder it a little bit first in the hole here and then I'll drop the capacitor in to the hole and that will work just fine and then I've got to do the hard bit which is that tiny little pad I've got to get onto on the other side so we get that through the through hole eventually there we go so that's through there so I've already pre-cut this leg to get it close to be the right length. 
and then I've got to just adjust it to get it to the pad that I need. So it's really close right now. So I need to get it to that pad there. So I'll just tweak it very slightly and get it positioned on that pad and then solder it on. And obviously I've got to secure it and make sure it's all good. But it's basically there. I don't want there to be any residual stress. I just want it to be sitting there naturally resting where it needs to be. Right, that's the plan. And it could take me a little while to get it sitting. That way there's no stress on that little pad because it is a tiny little pad. I've got to reinforce it a little bit as well and get it in place, but it's getting there. I'll come back once I've got that attached. In fact, thinking about it, because this is a bit tricky to do, what I might actually do is shorten the leg on this capacitor. Yeah, I think I might shorten the leg on the capacitor to make it, say, half as long. And then I'll get some of this wire and use that, because that will then have a bit of flex in it and take stress off. I'll be, that'd be better than having this rigid capacitor leg here on a little pad. So that's what I'll do is I'll use this as an intermediate connection. I'll do it that way instead. That'd be better. It will work, but a bit better. Right, the wire is attached. The wire is attached to that uh, C163 pad. Going up to that capacitor. That should work. I'm going to put some reinforcement in here as well once I've confirmed it works properly. But once I do that, then I think we should be okay. Right, so I'll just set my signal generator up to 26.5 megahertz, which is channel 15, New Zealand band. And we have a S7 signal. Obviously, I need to re-adline it and stuff, do the calibration. That's fine. But it is actually working. Channel 14, it's gone. 16, gone. So that's definitely receiving these in channels. So that modification has worked. I just need to check the TX side, make sure that's working. But I don't see why it wouldn't be. This is the same architecture, basically, as the original radio. Just doing the transmit side now. And indeed, I'm getting 26.5 megahertz. So that is working fine. No issues there. That's it, the radio's done. It works. Transmit and receive is all aligned. Let's really go back to the owner. That's that little job done. Other videos down below. Subscribe over here if you're not subscribed. And if you want to become a Patreon supporter over here, you can do that. That is a way of supporting the channel, helping to buy bits of test equipment and things like that to fix the videos about. If that interests you. Catch you later.